busted my butt, worked hard, and today's the first day of payoff. Just seeing our own gold clean. Dude, it was beautiful. I want gold, and I want it in my hand. I'm Chris Doe Doyle, executive producer of Gold Rush. This time on the Gold Rush After Show. Did you guys buy all your equipment on the side of the road? Yes. <laughs> Everybody knows that. For all the viewers at home, I wouldn't suggest going out and doing this. <laughs> Watch the Gold Rush After Show at discovery.com slash gold rush after show. Right now we know there's gold in the sluice, but nobody knows how much. So that'll be kind of a benchmark for the rest of the season. Okay, guys, this is a big moment. It's our first clean out. This is the critical stage. Everything we've done comes down to this. Yeah! Everybody's ready to see gold. Are we going to make it or break it? Oh, no way. Tell me that's gold. If we do this wrong, it's all for naught. All new Gold Rush, next Friday at 9, only on Discovery. And all of our pilots are highly trained professionals, so all you want to be bush pilots out there, do not try this at home. Northern Alaska. It's home to the most isolated citizens in America. The only way in, and the only way out, is by bush plane. Where the roads end, the Tweedo's world begins. On this episode, that rock face is over 2,000 feet. Jim helps a team of mountain climbers attempting to scale a sheer rock face in the remote Brooks Range. That gets pretty sick, man. When Ariel and Ponce face off in a dog sled race, you your ass somebody's going down. And pilot Luke Hickerson fights high winds at the top of the world. Intermittent wind gusts from 25 to 40 knots. Day in and day out. Pilots of Era Alaska battle extreme weather in small planes, providing the only lifeline to America's last frontier. Era 292, two hours fuel. I got three souls on board. Morning, Unicly. It's a beautiful day here on the Norton Sound. Early spring is upon us. Snow is melting off of the mountaintops in the Brooks Range, up in Barrow, and the surrounding villages along the North Slope. I want to wish those whalers good luck in their hunting. In Alaska's northernmost town, Barrow, lead pilot Luke Hickerson readies for a busy day on the North Slope. It's springtime here in Barrow. The sun's come out. Temperatures warmed up to a balmy uh, minus five degrees. The ice is starting to move out a little bit. The winds have shifted a little bit. And what that means in Barrow is it's whaling season. Every April marks the beginning of the spring whale hunt when small native crews cut a trail through the jagged Arctic sea ice and make camp at the open water. Barrow's 40 licensed whaling crews hunt the bowhead whale to feed the region's villages, nearly the same way their ancestors have for centuries. Small skin boats and harpoons are still utilized, except now hunters use modern explosive tip bullets to minimize the whale's suffering. Journeying several miles out onto the frozen ocean is a massive endeavor. With no food readily available in northern Alaska, the whale meat is critical to the survival of the Barrow villages. <laughs> Most of the uh, food is gathered and caught in the fall time. Freezers are full going into the winter time, but it's a long winter here. Without the whales, the people of the North Slope wouldn't survive. You guys ready? Yeah. There's uh, three different crews, crew members here, and we're all trying to find a good spot. The captains wanted to try to get a little bit of a visual on where the best place to set up their camp would be. They're looking for a nice flat piece of ice where they can set up their camp and where they're going to be able to pull this whale up onto the ice. But this year, the ice is extremely rough. There's no flat spots anywhere. We leave a hotel or taxi out for a seven. Yeah, three gallon Victor here, man. Uh, we're actually going to be uh, we're gonna be out over the water, uh, out over the ice, rather. 500 miles to the south, the mercury is rising in Uniclete, and Era Alaska owner and COO Jim Tweedo is on the move. Beautiful day. The days are getting longer. 
temperatures are getting warmer and spring is just around the corner. All the activity in the villages and in the area pick up. So when that picks up, our business picks up. With spring business booming, it's full speed ahead for Jim and his daughter, Ariel. Whoops. That worked out. When you're loading and unloading planes, you get a good workout because when I first started, the, my arms, I barely could lift a can of like pop. These are the worst Jeez. things in the world. It adds more than half my body weight. But now I'm like loading triple mailers and getting a good workout. My arms are almost as strong as my dad's. Oh, yeah. Jeez, Ariel. Almost. Spring in Alaska also brings with it an influx of adventure tourism. And for Jim, that means new flying opportunities. Hi. Hi. Are you Corey? Hey, I'm Corey. I'm Ariel. Ariel, nice, nice to meet you. Jim, hey, it's a pleasure to meet you. My name is Corey Rich. I'm a climber at heart, but my job and my passion in life is to document adventure. And that's really why I'm here, is to document a first ascent in the Brooks Range. As mountaineers continue to explore, it's becoming extremely rare to be the first to scale a wall untouched by anyone else throughout history. So the isolation of northern Alaska's Brooks Range presents many unclimbed peaks for climbers to stake their claim in mountaineering history. Well, there's, you know, there's the Alatna, the Aragat, you know, cleats down over here somewhere. Okay. Here's Bettel, this will be our base. I'm here in Alaska with a fantastic group of climbers that are all dear friends. We're looking for an unclimbed rock feature that, uh, that will create a fantastic adventure. This is where the biggest peaks are, right in this arc here. In this riverbed, is there any sort of terrain that's landable? I don't know. I like what we're trying to do, but there's three feet of powder, so I need an airplane that has uh, ski capability. You know, my mechanic, Daryl's got the wheel skis on his 180, so I can take my 180 down to get the engine upgrade, and I'm gonna borrow his plane to haul the climbers up. Sounds good, this is perfect. Wasting no time, Jim heads straight for Anchorage to swap planes. Jim's 1969 Cessna 180 has been his unfailing workhorse for most of his 35 years in the Alaska bush. It's not the prettiest looking airplane, but it's a working airplane. I like flying it. But as Jim's vast experience has pushed his off-airport exploration further, 180's limited horsepower resulted in one too many close calls. Jim, to abort the takeoff. I just don't have enough horsepower. Could have been disastrous. The new engine will let me haul a little bit heavier on takeoff, so it should open up some new flying for me. I've got these rock climbers that are potential business in the future. Hopefully it'll allow me to go into places where I don't have to worry so much about getting up. Back in Barrow, Luke flies the whaling captains over the jagged sea ice. Wow, oh, there's gotta be a whale around here. Boy, this is pretty jagged out here, huh? Yeah. Yeah, but you want, we could kind of head out to there and uh, just kind of follow up along the lead. The lead is where the ice cracks and it gives the whales an opportunity to come up and breathe. So I just head down, head down on this one? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The whalers must find a large flat campsite from which to spot and land their catch or risk missing a whale altogether, resulting in a food shortage affecting all of Barrow and the surrounding villages. This one looks really good. This is a big flat spot. Holy cow. Yeah, because you could land a whale on this flat spot. It's probably about three, three and a half foot thick, this area. Probably don't. Probably put a 50 foot whale on that eye. Wow. All right. You think you've seen enough to uh, give you a good idea? Okay, yeah. Uh, please talk to, talk to the rest of your crew about where you want to set up camp. Yep. Yep. Okay. Good, good. I'm glad this was, uh, I'm glad this worked out for you guys then. Eh? Yeah, you're welcome. You the man. <laughs> Is that what that means? That's the other translation? <laughs> we are Nakbara. Turning final approach over Cook Inlet, Jim is in Anchorage to swap planes with his lead mechanic, Daryl Lowe. Hey, Jim. Daryl? How's the flight? No, good, good. It'll take Daryl between two and three weeks to change over engines. This new engine, it's a 300 horsepower engine. You know, it gives me 70 more horsepower than what my old one had. Yeah, put the big boy on there. And I'm gonna borrow Daryl's 180. I need an airplane that has ski capability. So I'm gonna use his plane to haul the climbers up. And those are gonna be nice. Yeah, they should work good in the deep powder. Should work good for you. The only difference is the skis. Yep, skis for the lake, wheels for the dirt. Wheel skis are the landing gear of choice when flying in Arctic conditions. 
landings that can be adjusted mid-flight for either snow or runway landings. They are controlled by a manual hydraulic system that forces fluid through the lines to a cylinder in the skis. The cylinder extends a plate that raises the wheels and forms a smooth ski for snow, or retracts, lowering the wheels for runways, allowing for safe landings on both surfaces. I think I'm going to go take it for a spin and take off on wheels, go out across the inlet, drop the skis, come back and land on the lake. Fire up. All right, see you later. See ya. The test flight gives Jim a last chance to operate the unfamiliar wheel skis before heading into the wild. Jim circles back over Cook Inlet to land on the frozen to Long Lake near the airport. Feels good, except it's different. I keep banging my head into the... Bam. The red leveler here is for... Uh, the hand bump has no effect. It's for... Uh, leaving the plates stuck in the halfway position, preventing either a snow or gravel landing, where a ski could catch and flip the plane upon touchdown. And I have a problem lowering the ski. It won't move. Great prices. I just wish you could guarantee me they won't be beat. Oh, actually. Then I'd be like, you rule. <laughs> My kids would be like, you rule. <laughs> I'd be like, yes, I do rule. <laughs> oh. Got rules! Oh, I'll load up the sleigh. This is gonna be a great Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> ring ding a ding, ring ding a ding, ring ring, ring me up. <laughs> no need to wait with our Christmas price guarantee. We're so confident in our prices. If you do find a lower one between now and Christmas, we'll give you the difference on a Walmart gift card. Save money, live better, Walmart. This new AT and T 4G LTE is fast. Did you hear Sam got promoted to director? So 12 seconds ago. We should get him a present. Thanks for the gift basket. You're welcome. You see, HR just sent out new office rules because you're currently in violation of six of them. Oh yeah, baby. And seven. You guys hear that Fred's leaving? So 30 seconds ago. <laughs> we'll miss you. Oh, face cake. Some leftover cake. The new HTC Vivid. Stay a step ahead with AT and T 4G LTE with speeds up to 10 times faster than 3G. Ah, agents. I don't know if you've heard, but our training organization was recently named the best in the world. Yeah. Nice little pat on the back. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's good. That's good. That's, uh, that's fun. It is, after all, a celebration for all of us. We are insurance. We are farmers. Bum, 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 bum. 33 years ago, our goal was simple. Build the best vehicles and once a year offer them with special savings. Today, it's an American tradition. Toyota Thon is back with great deals on the Toyotas you've been waiting for. Right now, get a low 0% APR financing on select new Tundras. And drive with peace of mind thanks to Toyota Care, a complimentary maintenance plan with roadside assistance. Others have tried to copy it, but in the end, there's only one Toyota Thon. The biggest and best sales event of the year is going on now. <laughs> Would you like her to rephrase the question? I'm not going to be the person I'm expected to be anymore. Being expected. Bleu de Chanel. At Chanel.com. You haven't seen anything like Pizza Hut's new big dinner box. Two medium one-topping pizzas, eight intense wings, and five freshly baked breadsticks. Order the new big dinner box today and call dinner done. Only $19.99, only at your Pizza Hut. The man's coming and I, I can't stop him. We're going to bring it to a close to put some people in jail that need to be in jail. I'm getting a little bit nervous. Look at it. Moonshiners, all new. Wednesday at 10, only on Discovery. In Anchorage, Era Alaska COO and pilot Jim Tweedo is on a test flight with an unfamiliar plane. The hydraulic skis are stuck in the halfway position. Without them fully extended, Jim risks catching a ski and flipping the plane upon touchdown. Yeah, it's moved. I finally got the skis down, a little air in the system it looks like, and I'm landing at the lake. skis wouldn't pull up well i i couldn't get the the plate to extend could i got air in it then that'll do it yeah. sometimes sitting all the air comes up to the top and then you blow a big pocket down so jim just got back and during the test flight uh the skis wouldn't wouldn't go to the ski position but we ran the gear through you know we tried it three or four or five times and i think it just got a little air bubble out of the system it's working good now shouldn't be any problems all right daryl thanks
Thanks, I'll be keeping in touch. The next morning, Jim and mountain climber Corey Rich depart on a recon flight to the Aragetch Peaks. A cluster of granite spires that make up a section of northern Alaska's Brooks Range. God, this looks amazing. That's a pretty impressive wall. That giant, just west-facing feature. Xanadu, Xanadu. The recon flight gives Corey the chance to scout the mountains for potential climbing objectives. It gives Jim the chance to search for safe landing zones in the area. Whatever that feature is, there, that's actually amazing because there's two walls. One which is low angle, so there'd be less hazard of snow on us or falling rock. The rock feature Corey is interested in, an unnamed peak south of Xanadu, presents many opportunities for a first ascent. The southern face presents the most difficult and captivating walls and will be the focus of the world-class climbers. That is amazing. This is what it's about. This is, this is what we crave to do. And I looked over at Jim at one point and saw a big grin on his face as well. The same sense of adventure is what drew Jim to Alaska 30 years ago. It was exciting to be able to do whatever I felt like doing. You know, the plane offered another way of freedom. You need the right pilot. I and mean, you need a guy that, that has the... Uh, the experience to know what's safe, but also a little bit of the Wild West in it. He got what we were attempting to do, which was exciting. That rock face is over 2,000 feet. Now that they've found their mountain, Jim must find a suitable landing zone. With countless rocks and boulders hidden below the snow surface, Jim must locate a frozen river or lake where obstacles are scarce. How's that river look? Not very good. No, none of those smooth surfaces. If they're unable to find an adequate stretch of snow, the entire expedition could be aborted altogether. If you didn't have to slog through deep snow, be a piece of cake, huh? Yeah. After looking at the valley and stuff, I, I didn't really see a place that I would be comfortable to land in, so I had to move my landing zone further away out into the uh, Alatna Valley. That would have been the right place. I ain't gonna be fiddling around in there. It's just too, too much snow. Every mile they fly away from the mountain equals another hour of brutal cross-country trekking for the climbers, with only limited time for their ascent. What's the closest you think we could actually get to? I mean, is this it? Somewhere in this area? Realistically, yeah. Yeah. I think this is an easier walk up than that over there. Finally, Jim spots a snow-covered tundra pond connected to a river in the Atlanta Valley that appears to be a suitable landing zone. I mean, I think we would just literally ski on the river. Yeah. You just have to be kind of careful of falling through the yeah, ice and stuff, but... I mean, the good news is it's pretty flat. Yeah, it's flat, it's kind of wide open, you're not down in a steep valley. The bad news is we're not going to land that close to the wall. We've got a big ski approach to do, we're probably somewhere in the range of 10 to 14 miles. No matter how you cut it, you're going to do a lot of ski. Yeah. Up in Barrow, Luke preps his Cessna 208 for a flight to Point Lay with a passenger on spring break from Barrow's own Ilisakvik College. The break gives her a much-needed chance to visit distant family, including her young daughter. Anchor Center, good morning. Uh, 372, just off of Barrow. 800, climb at 6,000. So you, you going to Point Lay to pick up your daughter? Yeah. How long has it been since you've seen her? January. You haven't seen your daughter in four months? Yeah. Holy been, crap. I know. My son's like four and a half months old, I can't imagine that. Aww. Like when I'm there, it doesn't seem like he grows very much, and then I leave for two weeks, and I come back, and it seems completely different, you know? I gotta leave him for two weeks, and I'm about ready to go crazy. <laughs> <laughs> My wife, Alyssa, and I had a uh, beautiful baby boy born this past year. Drool for dad? Okay, drool over a smile. <laughs> it's the best thing that's ever happened to me. Better love your daddy, you're not gonna see him for another two weeks. I just got a... Uh, text message from my wife. It says, your son just peed in his mouth. Where do you learn that from? What the hell? <laughs> oh, that's awesome. When she was first born, she went out to Point Lay and then... A cool from Point Lay, intermittent wind gusts from 25 to 40 knots. Uh-oh. Eagle, yet please use caution. Well, like 20 to 25, that was just blowing snow. This boy is ready to mile. This could get stuck in a hurry.
great deal, even at the last minute. <sighs> well played, sir. Download the free Hotels.com app and get exclusive mobile deals. Hotels.com. Be smart, book smart. This is a key. It's a family tree. It's a pair of wings. It's a secret handshake. And a ticket to anywhere in the world. It's more than a uniform. It's the door to a world most people only dream of. There's strong, and then there's army strong. Try it on at GoArmy.com. It is showtime. Sons of Guns is back with a boom. But they're not the only ones. I am sure you want to play this game. I'm afraid you lose. Don't miss sneak peeks of Sherlock Holmes, A Game of Shadows. Inside Sons of Guns at 8, followed by an all-new episode at 9, only on Discovery. watching in any other room. Now lock in your price until 2013. Call 1-800-DIRECTV. This holiday, experience the world of Polo Ralph Lauren fragrances. The passion, the tradition, the world of Polo Ralph Lauren fragrances. At Macy's, your fragrance destination. Friday at 9, only on Discovery. 180 miles west of Barrow, lead pilot Luke Hickerson and a passenger are en route to Point Lay. Sudden gusting winds have caused blinding whiteout conditions. Uh-oh. Just blazes right now. We're on like 2025 that that's just blowing snow. It's Gets your adrenaline pumping a little bit. It's blowing 35 when I land. This thing's gonna go sideways. Yeah, you're gonna be going sideways down a runway doing 100 miles an hour. Spotting a break in the weather, Luke decides the landing is marginal, yet still safe. We don't get to operate in a perfect world. One thing we can't control is the weather. We just fly the airplane as best we can with the cards we're dealt. There's a lot of people around here that mom lives one place and kid lives over here. And, you know, you try to make it work and that's, we shuffle a lot of people around. We're really the lifeline that connects it all. Leaving your family is never easy, but at least they can get on a plane with us and in an hour be right back home. miles to the south, the team of mountain climbers arrives in Uniclete to meet their scout, Corey. Hey, you guys. What's happening, Corey? Right on, man. How is your... Uh... How you doing? <laughs> Dude, welcome, on, man. Like most towns in northwestern Alaska, Uniclete is too remote to have big city amenities. So the climbers will bed down at the best accommodations in town, Era Alaska's freight hangar. Hello, strangers. I'm Tommy. Tommy? Perno. Nice to meet you, Perno. After being introduced, Corey's team members unload the gear and get busy sorting. So we can, like, take everything out here and spread it out. And... Yeah, if you need more room, I could pull the loader forward. 
Since they'll have to haul their own gear 14 miles uphill, every pound counts. So the team must repack only the most essential gear, such as food, shelter, and climbing ropes. So, Tommy, that's food right there, huh? On this trip, we have a dream team, um, Tommy Caldwell. Is sort of the leader of the pack. Tommy is one of the most accomplished, well-rounded rock climbers. Hayden Kennedy is uh, 21 years old and sort of the prodigy on the trip. And at 21, he has a resume that looks like, you know, an accomplished 40-year-old. Todd Offenbacher is one of my best friends. Todd has traveled all over the world on expeditions to Pakistan, to uh, Peru. Tommy Thompson is one of the other climbers on the trip. Tommy, I think, has the biggest heart on the planet. So Tommy brings an enormous amount of climbing experience, but also just an attitude toward life, which is so refreshing. And it's already crystal clear that Jim is the best at what he does and is passionate about aviation, which we can relate to. We're passionate about climbing. Oh, awesome smelling. Someone can have the eye. Dinner. 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 Yeah, come on in. All right. All right. This is seal oil, and then there's seal meat in there, black meat. First, there was a little bit of fear. That, uh oh, this could be really painful. But you know, my philosophy is always when in Rome, do as the Romans, or when in Unk, do as the Tweedos do. Which one is this? That, that's beluga. Whale? Mm-hmm. And then mm -hmm. herring eggs. Those yeah. are good. Tastes like sushi, but without rice. Yukon dried fish. Is this supposed to be the side with you? Do one of you guys want to try the smoked duck? Is this one's fresh. Okay. Huh? Don't let it drip on you. Thank you. The guys are cool. We had them try a bunch of native foods, and all of them were eager to try it. And they were open to everything. So I like people that just will jump in and try anything that you give them. How do you use a bathroom in, like, that's the best. We're usually you end up urinating all over each other. <laughs> Everybody here has been peed on by somebody else. Really? Yeah. Oh, sometimes, God. sometimes you pee like, like on El Capitan, like where you know, big giant face like that. Sometimes you'll pee, and the guy above it, you'll actually pee on him because there's a the there's updraft. A, the updraft. But really, what? and it just you'll, you'll pee and it goes straight and up. Sometimes you'll even be mid pee and you see it going down to the side, and then an updraft comes in all and all it goes right past. <laughs> and, yeah, the guys above wow. you. What about number two? Very much. Just into space. Yeah. It's so liberating. <laughs> really? Yeah, like a, like a on El Cap, like a 3,000 foot poop. A mud falcon. I mean, <laughs> mud falcon is what the terminology is. Yeah. You guys, this is awesome. Is thanks, yeah, this right. is really cool. Thank you guys so much. Yeah, thanks for the hospitality. That's good stuff. Well, I think we need to go and figure out how to pack our bags. Have a good night in the needle plate. Bye. Thank you. After spending the night in Air Alaska's freight hangar, mountain climbers board a caravan to fly to the small town of Bettles, their launch point to the Aragach Peaks. Corey and Jim will lead the way to Bettles in the Cessna 180. Hi. Love you. My dad does a lot of off-airport stuff, but this is definitely one of the most challenging and sort of scary adventures that he's been on. It's scary, especially going up that place, and he hasn't done it before, so we're happy that it's going on, but it's also a relief when it's done and everyone's home in their own bed. Bettles, Jim will refuel and make multiple trips in the 180 to shuttle the climbers to the unimproved landing zone in the Alatna River Valley. Beautiful now out here. Sure is. From the landing zone, the climbers must trek approximately 14 miles to the Aragech Peaks. And they'll attempt a first ascent on an unclimbed rock feature south of Xanadu. But first they'll stop off in Bettles to coordinate the numerous trips. Ready? I'm tight. This is the most exciting part of every expedition, which is it's that moment that we finally get to, uh, detach from civilization and head into the mountains. On the first flight, Jim and Corey will go in light, carrying only 300 pounds of gear, so that Jim will be able to test the snow conditions. What's the temperature right now, Jim, outside? It's about uh, 15 degrees out this morning. Air temperature actually will probably get up in the 30s up there. That's great. Looks like we go into a lake right here. Jim has no way to establish a safe area to land, so like a true bush pilot, he lets nature do it for him. Yeah, I was thinking of landing over in here, right along some of those caribou tracks. If the surface supports the weight of a herd of fully grown 500-pound caribou, it should hold his 2,000-pound airplane as well. Got all this distance here to work. The unknown surface means Jim must run his skis through the snow without landing to test the depth and consistency and determine whether it's safe to land at all. So give it a whirl. You gotta be willing to get a little dirty. 
there's poo in here. Not good. His reign of filth continues. Is enough for you? Dirty Jobs. New season starts Tuesday at 9, only on Discovery. When I bought the coats, there was no tag that said, survives the unthinkable cold. But after driving all night to find my boys, I kind of think there should have been. I love the holidays. And with my Bank AmeriCard Cash Rewards credit card, I love them even more. I earn 1% cash back everywhere, every time. 2% on groceries, 3% on gas, automatically. No hoops to jump through. That's 1% back on... 2% on pumpkin pie. And apple. 3% back on four trips to the airport. It's as easy as one, two, three. The Bank AmeriCard Cash Rewards card. Apply online or at a Bank of America near you. I'm burning out this useless telephone. Hair is gone. Cheap cologne. Load a home. Rocket man. Rocket man. Burning out his fuse up here alone. Burning out his fuse up here alone. Crystal clear Fender premium audio. One of many premium features available on the all new Volkswagen Passat. The 2012 Motor Trend Car of the Year. inventory you're looking for. Focus, Fusion, and Fiesta starting at only $149 a month. Hurry, these deals end soon. Shop over 3,500 cars online anytime at PhilLongDenver.com or on Wadsworth, one mile south of Hamden. Introducing the Instant Trade Appraisal at Cooney Honda on Arapahoe. We'll appraise your trade fast and easy. Put it in writing. Good for seven days. We'll buy your car even if you don't buy ours. Now get up to $1,500 over Kelly Blue Book for your trade. Get Accords, less than $7 a day. CRVs, less than $8 a day. Get up to $1,500 over book value in an instant at Cooney Honda on Arapahoe. Our body shop is now open. Click Cooney-Honda.com. It's the model year in clearance event in Phil Long Country. Save up to $10,000 off MSRP on the 2011 Ford Ranger Super Cab 4x4. Only 219 a month. Over 100 available. Shop over 3,500 cars online anytime at PhilLongDenver.com or on Wadsworth, one mile south of Hamden. Hey, we have to go because the man's coming and I, I can't stop him when it's coming out of that. There's money going in the bucket. We're going to bring it to a close to put some people in jail that need to be in jail. I heard about them guys being uh, ABC agents acting like that hunter. Now it's time to do what we get paid to do. I'm getting a little bit nervous. Right now we're getting pretty close to the target. Look out, get out. The Moonshiners, all new. Wednesday at 10, only on Discovery. 60 miles north of the Arctic Circle, Air Alaska COO and pilot Jim Tweedo and climber Corey Rich are descending upon a frozen tundra pond to determine if it's safe to land. Jim must run his skis through the snow without landing to test the depth and consistency of the snow and ice. actually landed, which was a huge question mark, what the snow is going to be like. So now Jim is going to try to get back to battles instead of shuttling the guys. As Jim races rising temperatures back to battles, Era Alaska's northernmost hub in Barrow is facing its own balmy conditions. Another nice morning in Barrow, minus 15 this morning. Get the planes pulled out and uh, hopefully get this day going. Today's flight is a load of groceries headed for the village of Wainwright. Everything up here is more expensive. Of course, it has a lot to do with the shipping costs, and we're a long ways from nowhere. A lot of people don't have the option to 
to ship in food. And so they just go back to the ways they've been surviving out here forever. They do whaling, they hunt morals, and they hunt seals, and that's their main food source. <laughs> There's those snow machines right here. They're kind of headed off to the left right where we just came from. The hunt for the whale and barrow has begun. Snow machines are uh, heading out on the ice. They're pulling boats. They're pulling gear. They may be out there a day. They may be out there a month. On the frozen ice below, the barrow whalers make their way to the open lead found during their scout flight. After cutting a trail 10 miles through the jagged ice, they set up camp and in the process become the northernmost people in America. My name is Ned Thierry Sr. I'm a barrow whaling captain. Before we do the hunt, we set up our camp. You could see the ice over here. This is our fresh water ice that we have to drink. Cut directly from sea ice, water from the melted blocks is safe to drink. The salt molecules have been forced out by the tight-knit structure of the ice. We are proud now to reach the lead, which brings uh, a harvest to our community of the bowhead whale. With the camp set up, all the crew can do now is watch the open water and wait for a whale to surface. Back in the Aragedge Peaks, Jim shuttles in the last of the climbers. Rising temperatures during the day have begun to melt the snow. The returning to the landing zone is now becoming a challenge in itself. What we're going to have to do is uh, just keep moving and get to a place where we can set up the camp and, uh, and get that dialed in first before we think about climbing. Good luck, Jim. Yeah, you guys have a good trip. Yeah. You're on a trip of a lifetime, I think. The nearest rescue helicopters are stationed 340 miles away in Barrow. Jim will be the climber's only lifeline. And as he departs, they're on their own. We're about to really go into the unknown. We don't know what's going to happen as we head up this valley. There will be the unexpected. 14 miles to hike and snow conditions deteriorating. The team can't waste any time on the trail. It's really warmed up. The mountains are completely changing. Stuff is starting to stick to our skin. It's real heavy. It's settling everywhere around us. We're starting to see a lot more avalanche activity. Oh. <laughs> After 12 hours of trekking, they finally reach the base of the rock feature and take shelter against a large boulder to rest before tomorrow's monumental climb. Trying to go to bed early, it's kind of hard when it's uh, light till so late. So we're just kind of forcing ourselves to, to just get to bed early, get up pretty early tomorrow, and just get a big jump on it. This is the really scary part. It's, it's completely unknown what's up there, what we're going to get into. If you're intrigued by the hand-selected wood trim, the 38 and a half inches of legroom, and the reclinable, heated, Napa leather seats inside the Jeep Grand Cherokee, just wait until we tell you about the heated and ventilated front seats. that are a blight. Nothing beats radio control action. Bring in the family and check out the wide variety of RC models available from top manufacturers like Great Plains, Hobbyco, and Duratrax. We've got cars, boats, planes, and more for beginners and experts. You can't beat scorching the track, making waves, or tearing up the sky with cool RC models. It's a great way to bring the family together and start a hobby that'll last a lifetime. Stop in today. Here to share a huge announcement is Ken Bozarth himself. 
Take advantage of 0% financing for 72 months, which may save you $15,000. Or don't make a payment till next year. 0% for 72 months? That's right. 0% financing for 72 months on 2011 Tahoe, Suburbans, Avalanches. Unfortunately, Kent, that's all the time we have. But visit Ed Bozart today to take advantage of these incredible deals. Thank you. I trade on fundamentals, analysis, information. I trade on Trade Architect. This is web-based trading revisualized. Streaming real-time quotes, earnings analysis, probability analysis. That's what opportunity looks like. It's all visual, intuitive, and it's available free wherever the web is. This is how trade strategies are built. Trade Architect, only from TD Ameritrade. Welcome to better. Trade commission free for 60 days when you open an account. Great prices. I just wish you could guarantee me they won't be beat. Oh, actually. Then I'd be like, you rule. <laughs> My kids would be like, you rule. <laughs> I'd be like, yes, I do rule. <laughs> oh, that rules. Oh, I'll load up the sleigh. This is going to be a great Christmas. <laughs> ring, ding, ding, ring, ding, ding, ring, ring, ring me up. <laughs> no need to wait with our Christmas price guarantee. We're so confident in our prices. If you do find a lower one between now and Christmas, we'll give you the difference on a Walmart gift card. Save money. Live better. Walmart. I got it. We have to really bring the USS kid to life. We get to sing a battleship. They're coming. Yesterday, Air Alaska COO and pilot Jim Tweedo delivered a group of climbers to the remote Alaskan Brooks Range. Good luck, Ken. After fighting their way through 14 oh. miles of waist-deep snow oh. and making camp at the base of the mountain, they wait to make their final preparations for their historic ascent. This is the really scary part. It's, it's completely unknown what's up there, what we're going to get into. We're going to take off and see if we can conquer this mountain. The climbers head out on skis toward the mountain known as Xanadu. They'll split into two different teams. Team one will head south of Xanadu and search for a weakness or cracks in the unnamed rock wall to climb. While team two will navigate the northwest ridge of Xanadu, from which they'll document the historic first ascent. Back on the southern base, Tommy and Hayden are getting closer to finding their unclimbed wall. There's a good way to go up that dangling snow ramp until it ends and then kind of scoot left and then there's another dangling snow ramp. Yeah. And I think that'll get us up onto those upper snow slopes. And the ramp below it looks covered with vertical cracks, actually, which mm -hmm. you can see from a ways back. Tommy Caldwell finds the unclimbed route on which they'll attempt their first ascent. One of the best in the sport, Tommy takes the lead and will make the line by free climbing up the wall. Hayden follows, awaiting his turn to lead the way while Corey continues to document the ascent. This is a dream trip. Great rock, way back in the middle of nowhere. You know, I don't, I've never really been in a mountain range like this. When you look up and see something like that, it's pretty surreal. With over a thousand feet left, the climbers are less than halfway done, and they'll need to persist for the next three hours if they hope to summit. At the open lead discovered during their flight, Barrow's whaling crews have gathered to rejoice in the harvest of a captured bowhead whale. We all have proof! The ocean is our garden, because 10 months out of the year, we're isolated. There's no food source other than what we have been taught by tradition to survive. So this is part of it, right here, as you see it. Come on, let's go, let's go, let's go, go, go. We're getting it done right now. Right there, that's where the harpoon hit its mark, right on that part. After the whale breaches, the hunters strike with a harpoon attached to a float, then fire a whale gun loaded with penthrite explosives aiming for the brain to ensure an instant kill and minimal suffering. This is what they use as the <laughs> pentrite bomb. This is just only a portion of it, that's, so it exploded like it should. So right now these guys are getting ready to cut the heart up. That heart is going to the community. From the heart, rich in protein and vitamin E, to the skin, blubber and meat, every part of the whale has a purpose and nothing is wasted, as is tradition. These young men over here, they're doing the hard work. Hey. 
right now they're taking the tongue off. Yeah. This That's is a tip tongue. part. A 29 foot whale is cut apart and broken down into shares, 20 pounds per household. The meat makes up the bulk of each meal, ensuring all of Barrow's 4,000 residents will stay fed for months to come. This is the harpoon that we used to make sure we got our mark. It was straight before, but now it's bent out of shape. Bent by the strength of the whale, the harpoon held strong, allowing the hunters to pursue in their skin boat. Once captured, they brought it ashore in its entirety, including the baleen, used by the whale to catch and filter edible plankton. By the time they are done cutting up this whale, they spread it out and they'll take every part of the whale piece by piece, as we were taught when we were young. All hands, all you crew members, come over here. About what, how many? You know the ball of book tip that's going to the second off. That's already cut up right away. Right now, already. Every person over here will get a share. You know, divided among all the people in the community area wide. With this catch, the town of Barrow will survive after the cold, dark winter. They'll live on as the spring sun shines upon the north slope. It's a wonderful blessing in the gift. <laughs> We're a part of it. miles south, Ariel is doing her part to keep another Alaskan tradition alive. Team of winners right here. Go get him! Go get him! There is a big dog race. It's a tradition. It happens every year. The local mushers bring their dog team down. It's really fun. I'm hopefully going to enter the adult race. Dogs are awesome. They're champs. Yo! Hey! What's up? You know, Ariel's a competitive person and so am I, and so she challenged me to a race. There's obviously going to be some trash talking. You're going to get your ass whooped. Doubt it. Yep. It's I'm champion, whoop. ex champion, right here. Shoot. It's all in the knees. When Ariel and Ponce said that they wanted to race, I was really interested in watching. Because I thought Ponce was going to drag, and I wanted to see that. Springtime. Crap, it's back. You gotta be on your toes. I haven't heard from the climbers in a couple days now. I'm, I'm getting a little concerned. I don't know what I'm gonna find. All new Flying Wild Alaska, next Friday at 10, only on Discovery. Now that we can get any Pizza Hut pizza for just 10 bucks, I don't have to settle anymore. You're just talking about pizza though, right? Of course. Right now, any pizza is just 10 bucks when you carry out. Any pizza, any size, any crust, any toppings, only 10 bucks when you carry out. And only at your Pizza Hut. 33 years ago, we had a simple idea. Make the best vehicles in America, and once a year, offer them with special savings. Today, it's a phenomenon. toyota -thon is back. See the reinvented Camry. Named a 2012 best resale value by Kelly Blue Books, KBB.com. And with amazing deals, now's the time to get the Toyota you've been waiting for. Others have tried to copy it, but in the end, there's only one toyota -thon. The biggest and best sales event of the year is going on now. Let's talk about fees. There are ATM fees, account service fees, and the most dreaded fees of all, hidden fees. At Charles Schwab, you won't pay fees on top of fees. No monthly account service fees, no hidden fees. And we rebate every ATM fee. So talk to Chuck, because when it comes to talking, there is no fee. For some, it's a lifelong passion. For others, it's something discovered yesterday. We all have things that speak to us. They drive us to get up early and stay up late. Getting lost in the things we love has never felt quite like this. This holiday, experience the world of Polo Ralph Lauren fragrances. The passion, the tradition, the world of Polo Ralph Lauren fragrances. At Macy's, your fragrance destination. Everything we've done comes down to this. Yeehaw! Everybody's ready to see gold. Tell me that's gold. Are we going to make it or break it? All new Gold Rush, next Friday at 9, only on Discovery. In Uniclete, the entire town is turned out for the annual spring dog sled race. Where Ariel and Ponce will face off. Yay! But not before some friendly trash talking. You're gonna get your ass whooped. Doubt it. Ariel's ahead. 
Monster's dog motion style is totally pants. He was all over the place. I wanted to win, man. I, I was running my ass off. I wanted to beat her. We got a 170 pound dude compared to a 90 pound girl. That's what I'm gonna blame on. Yeah, get down on your knees and tell me you'll love me. Yeah, you gotta kiss my wrist. Aww. <laughs> That'll shut him up. It was a great day. We couldn't ask for anything more. We were with our family, our friends. The weather was nice, and it was just perfect. I got my butt whooped. I guess I'm gonna have to wait till next year to beat you. Uh, loser. In Barrow, 7 p.m. marks the last flight in. And quitting time for lead pilot Luke Hickerson. All right, well, the day is uh, done. Been invited over to uh, Captain's house. Share a little bit of the whale he got with me. I'm hungry and it's time to chow down some muck duck. I'm ready. Woo! Across town, Captain Ned Airy brings in the last of the whale meat. While his wife and neighbors break down massive chunks of meat and blubber. This is called mukta. This black is actually the skin of the bullhead whale. Yeah. And the skin with the blubber is called mukta. The dark skin covers the nearly 12 inches of pink blubber. All of it edible. This is the tail. Ah, <laughs> that was good. <laughs> The captain's house is bustling with action. And I know everybody in the community will definitely appreciate what he's done. All right. Well, thanks. This yeah. is awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Congratulations again. That's what we always look forward to. So people get a little big like that. They've got uh, the intestines, uh, maktak, uh, there's a uh, tongue in there, and then the uh, blibber. Perfect. Well, thanks for sharing with me. Yeah, I really appreciate time. it. It's kind of an honor for me. The captain actually offered to share his uh, catch with me. All right, fresh bag of muck duck, whale meat. Time to go have dinner. 300 miles southwest, the climbers are less than 1,000 feet from the summit. Hayden continues to plant anchors in the cracks above that Tommy and Corey use to ascend the rock face. Love it. <laughs> what makes it all good? That feels good to be up on top of that wall. Having reached the top of the wall, their first ascent will be complete once they traverse the ridge and reach the highest peak. Summiting an unclimbed wall in the remote Brooks Range of Alaska, the climbing team has reached new heights where nobody yet dared to go. Back in Uniclete, Jim, Ferno, Ariel, and Ponce are on a climb of their own. Do you have to go back up for those climbers, Jim? Or when do you have to go back up? I don't know, I might go up tomorrow or Tuesday. There's a comparison between what these climbers did in, in the flying that we do. These guys are some of the best climbers in the world, and what they do is, is very dangerous. You know, what they do is like some of the more dangerous flying that we've tried to do. There's just groups that kind of push themselves, and, you know, they take the harder route, and they do the, the more dangerous thing. Deep into the country there, doing something that nobody else has done. Hell yeah, I'd have done that 25 years ago. Come on, old man. Everybody's kind of doing what they like to do. Up in the frozen north, 
Seven men from the lower 48 are into their second season mining for gold. It's ain't a love story, it's a freaking gold mine. For the Huffman crew, it's time to put up or shut up. You guys can get that out of your mind right now. They put everything on the line. Oh. Again, to strike it rich. This is the American dream, this is what it is. No longer rookie miners. We're ready to rock. They decided to drill before digging. Why'd you pick that area? Now, they have proof that they are on the gold. There's gold under this ground. We just gotta dig it up. But the Klondike won't give up her...